Sit right down and I'll show you where my dreams began. I'm Michael Dugan, your culinary host, guiding you through the chef's journey. Join me at the chef's table where you'll experience stories, secret sauces, signature dishes, and kitchen disasters. In part one, we meet Australian chef Gunawan. He grew up in Indonesia around flavorful foods and spices, but was not allowed to be in the kitchen. He didn't learn to cook till he was in college and attending cooking school. By then, it was baptism by fire as he began his culinary journey and discovered a passion for cooking by day and working in the front of the house at night. He attended Toulouse La Merle, a culinary school in Indonesia, and then moved on to Le Cordon Bleu in France to pursue his passion in pâtissier. Gunawan, thanks for coming on the show today. Well, Michael, thanks for having me uh, in your show. Yeah, I'm just so excited. I wanted to start out with taking us back to your childhood. What was it like growing up and, and where were you? I was in Indonesia when I was growing up. Um, you know, I mean, Indonesia is a country with rich of spices, um, full of food journey, you know. So I grew up with a lot of different types of food. Yes, I love eating. <laughs> Definitely. At an early age, how would you say you were connected to food? Can you paint a little bit of a picture for us? What it was like, you know, was it your your mom that did the cooking, your aunt, your family, your dad? Well, I would say the surrounding. My mom cooked a lot of food. Uh, I think our home, my mom will cook from 5 a.m., 10 a.m., and then 5 p.m. So we always have food on the table every breakfast, every lunch, and every dinner. And with breakfast, we have different type of breakfast than um, I would say in Australia. So in the morning, we will have sometimes fried rice, fried noodles, you know, a little bit heavy for a breakfast. <laughs> yeah, fried rice and fried noodles for breakfast. That's yeah, that's pretty heavy. Yes, but it's a common thing in Indonesia. So we don't eat, you know, like toast with a uh, poached egg or something. So it's just something different. As a kid, were you connected? Were you excited about cooking? Or is it something that happened later on? Well, that's funny. Um, as a kid, especially a boy in Asian household, um, we are not allowed to be in the kitchen. Ah, okay. You know, it's like, you're a boy. Probably because uh, they worry or they're concerned about hazard. You know, you're, you're still young. So every time I try to cook something on my own, they're like, my mom was like, no, I'll cook it for you. So I never have a chance to be in the kitchen. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, but what about the tasting of foods? Like as a kid, were there any special foods that you enjoyed? Any special dishes? Well, um, I'm a sweet tooth myself. So okay. if my relative or my sister um, traveling, they always bought me chocolate. <laughs> Oh, especially just for me, because we are six uh, siblings. Um, okay. I come from a six sibling family and I'm the youngest. My relatives, my sister, my brother, if they're traveling, they always bought me chocolates. <laughs> and that's what uh, my favorite memories about having sweet stuff. I see. Okay. As you were growing up, when did you decide you kind of wanted to learn about cooking and maybe think about becoming a chef? Well, um, that's sort of kind of journey uh, where it's actually related to uh, the arts. I always have a passion about arts since I was in kindergarten. I love drawing. Um, and then I thought I want to pursue my career in arts. So I told my dad that I want to go for multimedia design in uni. But then he's, he said, no. Nah, that's not making money, you know. Um, right. He wanted me to be a doctor. He wanted me to be a lawyer. But then I was like, no, I'm going for hospitality because my friend told me you can just get a job in anywhere. You, know, you can be front of house. You can be back of house. You can be housekeeping. You can be anything. Uh, without knowing anything about hospitality, I just choose that and do it. 
So when I was in the kitchen at first, it was very funny because I don't even know how to turn on the stove, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I went to Malaysia to study. It's a French culinary. Obviously, I'm away from family. I need to stay on my own. So rented an apartment with a housemate. And I want to cook uh, instant noodle. Uh, so it means that I need to cook. Uh, I need to turn on the stove, Gosh. the water. So I need to knock his door. Uh, hey, do you know how to turn on the stove? And he was like, I thought you study hospitality. You should know how to turn on stuff. I was like, well, this is my first time being away. Oh my gosh. So I have to tell you about this or brought back this amazing memory. I was in college. I, I live in Washington yep. state in Seattle, Washington. And on, in Eastern Washington, I went to school at Washington state university. And I had a roommate that was a really big bodybuilder. I came downstairs one time and I heard this, ouch, 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 ouch. And I looked at him and I watched him. He was making a grilled cheese sandwich, mm -hmm. just a grilled cheese sandwich in a pan. But the pan was hot. He was turning it with his fingers, not with a spatula, not with <laughs> anything, because he didn't know how to cook. So I had to teach him how to cook. Like you use a spatula, you use, you know, some kind of utensil to protect your hands. But he was using his fingers to turn, you know, the grilled cheese and the cheese was like burning his fingers. So anyway, <laughs> you just, you just brought back that memory that I had to share. But yeah, that's so interesting. Really know how to cook at the time. People always ask me, do you like to cook since you were younger? That's why you yeah. choose to be a chef. I was like, hey. And um, when I was studying uh, to be a chef, I almost puke when I see the chef cut the chicken. Oh, yeah. Because I used to be a vegetarian before. Oh, wow. And then uh, I was just practicing uh, for a year. And then when I get into college and just like seeing the chef cut the chicken, I was like, I'm almost puke. And I told my group mate, can you cut all the protein? I will do anything for you. Um, I will wash the dishes for you. I will cut all the veggie and stuff, but you help me with the protein. And I was really, really bad in the kitchen. But during that time, I actually liked front of house as in uh, being a waiter. Okay. I love interacting with the customers. Um, I love to, how to say, upselling menu. Hey, why don't you buy this? Uh, why don't, uh, this is really great uh, combination with your entree or something. And they love your idea. And when they enjoy the meal, they actually say thank you to you. And that's kind of like an achievement to me or a, a very good satisfaction. So I really love to see their smile when they're happy to dine in. I wanted to be a restaurant manager. I don't want to spend my whole life in the kitchen because I don't like the kitchen. And that's funny. I'm stuck in the kitchen now. <laughs> of course. Of course. Um, so how the, the story goes is because I'm thinking if I am score straight A for my um, F and B, but zero or very bad score in kitchen, I can't, I can't pass my college. What I'm thinking is that uh, every night there is uh, senior classes that require teaching a comic. So they need to have a junior as they call me. So they become the sous chef or become the head chef that they need to train. Quick, tell us what what is a komi? Komi, basically the first rank in the kitchen because in the Escovier, we have this hierarchy in the um, military. You know, there is komi, demi-chef, uh, chef de party, junior sous chef, sous chef, and then senior sous chef, and then head chef, and then executive chef, I would say, you know, like, so there is a hierarchy that we right. need to respect, uh, responsibility as well. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, in a restaurant, mostly just a commie, a sous chef, and head chef. That makes sense, because in a large kitchen, like a hotel-style kitchen, you're going to have that whole hierarchy, that whole structure. I volunteer myself every night to be in the kitchen. I still love being in front of house though. So I just do it purely because I wanted to pass my college. Okay. Not because I want to be in the kitchen, but the more I know about kitchen, uh, it builds the confidence. So the senior keep uh, telling me, oh, you are natural, you're good at this and stuff. And they, they're really happy with my work. So I would say everyone wants to book me in as a uh, comic that time. All the senior have been fighting to get me. So I've been doing that for three semester. So I actually never leave college. In the morning till afternoon, I'm studying for my own semester. 
And then at night, I will be volunteering to help the senior. So that's going to be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I will be in the kitchen. But Tuesday and Thursday, I volunteer to be in the restaurant service as the bartender. So I get to see, I get to see how they do table dot setting or a la carte setting. So there is two different types of setting in the restaurant. I'm just being the first uh, year or first semester students, right? We're not being taught about how to do table dot setting. So when I get into second semester before lecturer taught us, I already know how to do all this. So the lecturer was wondering like, oh, I haven't taught you this. How how come you know this? Well, in semester one, I never go home. <laughs> Every night I'm just being in the oh college and learn from the senior, you know. Uh-huh. Um, and then come towards industrial placement, which is uh, you do work placement in the industry, right? Okay. Um, they placed me into the restaurant, which is in the resort for a breakfast buffet. Oh, so I, I, I think my personality is like I love challenges, okay. and to me, the buffet wasn't has any challenge because I can't offer them anything to uh, upsell. You know, it's um, more standard when you do a buffet. Exactly, and uh-huh. I, I can't do you know guru and service or doing flambe in front of them because oh, my oh, yeah. memories, yeah, my memories about doing flambe in front of in the customers is that yeah, yeah, it's like uh, making them amazed. You know, like they wow, and I feel right. really proud about doing that. I, I love that uh, experience. That's your artist coming out. I, I think that's what helps me to build my career today as well. That. I learn about seeing the guest expression. I mean, most chef is always behind the kitchen, right? right. They've never seen how much a uh, customer enjoy the food that give you the fuel to do better, to give them more experience that wow them. So I think um, I'm privileged or I got more advantage because I used to work in front that I see uh, firsthand the customer's ex- expression. Do they enjoy the experience? Do they enjoy the food? That helps me uh, how to give them experience being a chef. So that's continue when I was working in the restaurant, right? Uh, doing buffet, I was like, I don't learn anything to me. I felt like I don't learn anything. Right. So I volunteered myself to get into kitchen again because I don't want to waste my time. And then finally, I get into a pastry kitchen. Oh, That's when I found out that I, I can actually um, put up Art on a plate, you know. Uh, in my mind, plate is like a white blank canvas, and then you just draw it. You know, like for example, like raspberry coolie, you put red color on it, and then you put your dessert. You can put any anything because to me, pa- why pastry is because um, in pastry it's more forgiving. I would say you have more time to prepare. Mm. So most of your dessert stuff you prepare beforehand where cooking, it's like last minute. You're always railing it to use a kitchen term. Yeah. It means get it out right now. Yeah. And hot yep. food need to be served hot. Yep. Where with dessert, you have more chances to you know make it pretty or you have a delicate hand to put it slowly with, with hot food. Come on, let's go, let's go, you know? Right. So, right. um it doesn't mean that you can't put art on that hot food, but probably because my sweet tooth as well that led me to pastry. So that that's how it began. This was yes. the hospitality management? Yes, correct. I was studying uh, food engineering at okay. Toulouse Le Mirail. So it's a French culinary school uh, specialized in food engineering where I study food science, food sociology, cooking, and F&B, stuff like that. And the name of the school again? We'll be back after a quick break. You don't know what to make for dinner again? You want to explore new cuisines, but you don't have time? What if you have new inspirations and we provide you with the ingredients and recipes? We know you want to travel, learn new foods, explore the world, but life's responsibilities keep getting in your way. What if you can bring those experiences to your home neatly packed into a box? Lady Boot Collective is a subscription service that finds real people from around the world to create beautifully curated assortments of recipes, ingredients, and cultural content. Not only do we include cultural ingredients, but also a set of detailed recipe cards with instructions on how to use them. Each box also has a QR code that when scanned takes you to tons more global exploration to immerse yourself in. 
Everything from film to lifestyle, art to history, it all can be found here. Live your life to the fullest. Subscribe now and don't miss out on the next cultural adventure. Lady Boo Collective. Always exploring. Uh, Toulouse Le Miro, Université de Toulouse Le Miro. That was in Australia? In Malaysia. In Malaysia. In Malaysia. Okay, so that was in Malaysia. But then, yes, and uh, I have to finish my degree in Toulouse, which is south of France. Okay. That's how I get the experience to be in France and then Malaysia, France. And then after I came back from my degree, I decided I want to be focused more in pastry. So I chose Le Cordon Bleu. Ah, and that's where things really happened. Yes. Uh, when I study my uni, it's more general. You know, you study everything basic and general. It's not specialized. Right. But this became more specialized at Lourdes. Le Cordon Bleu. Correct, correct. And what kind of area did you specialize in? In pâtisserie, which is making dessert. Was there anyone there that influenced you? Like woke you up and said, this is where I want to go? Honestly, it's like I said, the first time I wanted to do art, but um, I wasn't allowed to. Yeah. And then I chose hospitality just because, you know, I just need to find a job. And then I realized, hey, I can actually put my art on a plate, but in different medium uh, where at first, you know, you're studying. Uh, I wanted to do digital uh, arts, but then oh. now I can actually put the food as an art okay. for people to enjoy. And, you know, I think that's different type of arts, but still doing what I want to do. You know, I can draw stuff uh, from my imagination to the plates and playing with flavors. I think playing with flavors is sort of like an art as well. We need to make sure that we share your Instagram with our audience and I'll have that available for them. And we'll talk about that later. But you have some amazing desserts and designs in your Instagram. I am just I, I look at it and I go, it's really incredible what, what you've created and what you can create in cooking school. Is that where you competed in competition? I, I saw something about the Asia Pastry Cup. 2013, I moved to Australia to study. So the first competition I went to is Dilma High Tea competition. Okay. And that's when the first time I discovered making something outside the box. So when I first came to Australia, uh, everyone complains about macarons being too sweet. Oh, you know, the shells are sweet. The filling are sweet. People yeah. are generally putting chocolate filling, raspberry or uh, raspberry jam or, you know, salted caramel or something, adding sweet on sweet. And then on the way in the bus to college, I was thinking about Chinese cooking. There is sweet sour pork, sweet spicy beef, you know, lemon chicken. I'm thinking there is a sweet element in the savory. Why can't I reverse that to dessert? Why can't I take the sweetness and put savory in it or different flavor in it? Sweet, spicy, sweet, sour. The shell is sweet. So now the filling, I need to take away that sweetness and then put something else. You know, putting sour, putting spicy, putting, you know, spices that make that different. I came up with Tommy and Macaroon. When I first made it, none of my classmates wanted to try it. Only my lecturer is my mentor still today. He tried and he said, keep doing what you're doing. You'll go far. And, you know, mm. that gives me a fuel or a motivation to do more. My friends refuse to try it, not even touch it because they think Tom Yum, yuck. Tom Yum in my career, it's like yuck, okay. you know. That's what they think. You know, I have white chocolate in it. <clears throat> I have spices why can you drink cinnamon latte or you drink chai latte where it has lots of spices? Sure. But you can't have tom yum spices. It's spices. There is no chicken in it. There's no prawn in it. But it's mm. just the spices, pure spices in it that give that tom yum flavor, right? Can you describe what tom yum is like? So uh, to me, that's like full of uh, flavor, like sour sweet, spicy, everything okay. into one. So um, why I'm thinking about that, because that's something that I love to drink, uh, to eat. Yeah. And that's helped me to create some flavor or new flavor, because something that I already know or something that I 
eat often. I have the knowledge because I believe palate is knowledge. Definitely. That's why I respect those people who going around, like your wife, Michael, um, mm-hmm. has been trying a lot of different restaurants. If they say, oh, I'm not chef, uh, I can't give you any advice because they have more knowledge than me. They travel everywhere and try different food. I wanted to have their feedback because they have great experience, great uh, skills and palate. You know, mm-hmm. to me, that is knowledge. Knowledge is power. Yeah, knowledge is definitely power. And you know, it's funny, we, we have traveled a lot and I, I was in Italy a few years ago and I had mm-hmm. never tried gelato and she mm-hmm. brought me into Florence at a gelato stand and it was, oh, just the experience of tasting gelato in Italy for the first time was absolutely incredible. So she, she knew about all these things, you know, I'd been to cooking school and I cooked for a while and worked in restaurants, yeah. but I'd never experienced gelato. And it was this explosion yeah. of flavors. So yeah, I have to agree with you about that. Um, and yes, and you know, my friend refused to try the Tomia you know, macaroons and stuff. And then I proved myself by joining competition. Okay. And I put that Tomia you know, macaroons in the competition. I was still a student and I didn't know what's a competition uh, for. I just uh-huh. signed, signed myself up. I didn't know that uh, all my competitors are from hotel. They are head chef head pastry chefs and i was oh like whoa that's fantastic uh, give me a break i'm just a student you right. know <laughs> i was very young at the time as well and i'm the last contestant to present my my food so i was really nervous because like everyone uh you know head chef and i tried to break the ice i tried to talk to them and i was like oh where are you from where you work and they say oh i'm working in stanford um what's your position and uh, you know and then there was like i'm the head chef but sure. they wasn't really give the friendly vibe probably mm-hmm. because they are uh trying to focus at the uh, competition maybe they're just being nervous or something but i just felt like they're not welcome so i just walk away how to say trying to distract myself okay. by trying to talk to people so that i forgot that i'm in the competition you know because i'm the last person to uh, present when i come to present i was only have a very simple table setting where everyone else has you know alice exactly. in wonderland team <laughs> yes they have all these boxes they have all the trees and yeah where mine is just a fast and i stole a flower from my school and they just oh put gosh. it on and it's just a white plain table and you know like i was like oh no i have different from everyone's and you know, I lost mark and because I didn't know a table setting, uh, you got the mark as well. Yeah. So I lose mark on that as well, but never mind. To me, competition it's about experience. Right. I I win I win myself before I even um doing anything because sure. I had the courage to do it. It's um helping me to build confidence. To me, competition is never about losing. You never lose anything because you only gain, you get inspired by people, you learn something from other people and you gain experience, you gain your confidence. So I enjoy about competition is that I don't see about winning or losing. I gain experience. I gain confidence. I, I, you know, I get inspired by other people's product. That's really great advice to provide for people who are listening because yeah, you do gain knowledge and and you don't always have to be really aggressive about competing. It's a learning experience. It's a journey. Correct. To me, who you need to compete is um, yourself from yesterday. Yeah. The only person that you compete is the person you always want to be better. Every day you learn to be better. So you're not comparing yourself to other people. You compare yourself with yourself from yesterday. Definitely. That's an amazing story. And and so that was 2012? And 13. And 13. Okay. And then what, yes. happened, what happened after that? Because obviously when that happened, something changed with you. Because the uh, judges was impressed with the Tom and Macarons. They're like, yeah. this is what we've been looking for. This is what we're looking for. It's something different and match the tea. Mm-hmm. Because it's they are selling their tea. They want you to use the tea. They want you okay. to match with the tea. And they're very impressed. Um, they said that 
you know, many competitors trying to do wow, uh, making something beyond the things, but it just doesn't match the tea. So what's the point? Right. And then I realized all the chefs coming in to listen to their feedback about me. I was like, yeah. well, yeah. you know, um, and then when uh, come towards the price giving time, um, I thought, you know, it just, thanks for participate. Uh, I thought I will just get that because this is my first experience anyway. Mm -hmm. Suddenly they say bronze, good on one. And I was, I just clapped my hand because I, I would never thought that was me, but someone else, you know, I just clapped my hand and everyone look at me. That's you. I was like, what? It me? And I just go up <clears throat> oh and I, I was having the same, how to say, I get bronze and three at a different hotels had chef get bronze as well. Oh, okay. As a student, I get the same score as everyone else, and I don't even have a great setting because I'm being very naive. I don't even know anything, you know. Right. I just right. learn, and but I win from that flavor, and that's when it's evolved into you know nachos, macaroon. So the show is made of uh, corn chips, and the filling is actually tomato salsa, white chocolate ganache. So oh when you gosh. bite through it, you feel like you're eating nachos, but when you yeah. open your eyes, it's like, oh, this is macaroon. Oh my gosh. That's that's really unique. So from that competition, it's actually changed the way I, because I get motivation from people where they enjoy the way I think about food, how I combine the flavors. So that's give me motivation to do more. Wow. Be sure to catch part two of our interview with Chef Gunawan and learn about how his unexpected success in competitions led to an amazing career as both a head chef and a pastry chef, then onto new roles as competition judge, masterclass instructor, and brand ambassador for Nestle. We'll also talk about some of his favorite chefs and signature creations in the next episode. Thanks for joining us today. Follow us on Facebook. Find our website in the show notes. Subscribe on Spotify, iHeartRadio, or wherever you listen. Leave a comment with five stars and stay tuned for the next episode of Voice for Chefs.